inheritance. Let's talk about Java inheritance. So what I want to do is I want to implement something like this. This is a little UML diagram where we're going to have a person class. Persons have names. So we're going to have a get name method and a set name method for the person. And then we also, we also have students and employees. Now a student is a person, right? So we want the student class to inherit from the person class. So we want it to extend the person class. Similarly, an employee is also a person. So we want the employee to extend the person class. As such, of course, the student uh, will have his own credits. Right? These are, say, the number of credits the student is taking. So we want this method here. And we also want, for the employees, they don't have credits. Uh, they have a salary that they get paid. So we want a salary method for the employee. And we don't want you know, the student to have salary or the employee to have credits. Uh, you can see this is, uh, what you gain from this is that you can put anything that is common to persons. So like the name, everybody has a name, probably uh, you know, an ID number, everybody has that, a date of birth. You can put all those things in the person class. And then anything that is specific to the student only, but not the person, uh, and not the employee, you put that in the student class, anything specific to the employee class, you put in the employee class. So inheritance uh, is just a way of, uh, you know, putting things in these little boxes and, you know, separating the concerns and reusing code. That's the main thing. You want to try to push everything as high up as you can in the hierarchy. Okay, so let's do this. Let's first you start at the top. And uh, we're going to create a person class. Click there. I need a new person. And uh, I'm going to put a main for unit testing. I'm going to click finish. So I got my person class. And uh, if you see here, he has a name. So I'm going to just go ahead and give it a private string name to that person. I save that. And then I'm gonna go, I need some setters and getters. I'm just gonna do the lazy thing, generate getter setters, select all, click okay, boom. I got my person. All right now I need a student with credits. I do it again, creating a class, student. Now the thing is this student is gonna inherit from person. So I can come here and I can click that and I can type in per error. Uh, Person, you see it right there from the default package. Person, I also want a main again, maybe we'll do it for unit testing. I'm gonna click finish. So now I created a student class. And so now you see the one little difference is this part here it says extends person. That's it. So that's what tells Java that the student class extends the person class or inherits from the person class. So extends says this student is going to extend that person class. And finally, I'm going to do employee. It's the same thing. Employee extends the person class. And um, volume, finish. Boom. I got that. So I need, uh, I need to go back to student. Now, student has credits. So I'm going to say private int credit and generate setters and getters for this guy for the credits select all okay boom i'm gonna go to employee and uh, employee has a salary private double salary generate setters and getters for him Select all, okay, boom, we're done. Okay, so now let's go to main and uh, try to create some of these persons. Let's just start with a simple one. I'm gonna create a person, P is a new person. P dot, uh, P dot set name. Uh, I'm gonna call him test. All right. So that person P and uh, I'm gonna 
going to print them out, P, you know what's going to happen. So when I try to run that, it's just going to give me that. Uh, I really want to print the name, right? So if you remember to do that, I need my two string method. So I'm going to go to the person class. I'm going to say public string two string. No arguments. And that is simply going to return the name of the person. And now when I run this, it's going to give me test, right? So there's a code. P said name test. I want his, uh, yeah, printed out his name. So Bobby. You can change that. Booby. Yeah, uh, it's supposed to be Bobby. So here you go. Okay, so now this is kind of annoying, right? Where we really want to put his name up here. Okay, so let's do that. That means, of course, we did this before. We want a constructor for the person class that takes one argument, uh, which is the name. So we're going to do that. Say public person string name. That's my constructor. And all it does is it's going to set this dot name to be the name in the argument. If you remember, right, this, oops, pers person. Uh, this name argument is different from this one. So th this dot name is taking the argument value and putting it in, in the member variable. So that works. Um, what you notice, uh, maybe you notice, uh, these little things appeared up here now. Ooh, there's a little X's. So we changed person at Java. That messed up student at Java. What's going on? Let's go over there. So if you go over there, you over in Eclipse is going to tell us. Um, got kind of over mouse. It says implicit super constructor person is undefined for default constructor. Must define an explicit constructor. So what happened is because the super class, you know, we just defined that one argument constructor. Uh, now we need to do the same thing for the subclass. So you cannot have a superclass with a constructor and a subclass that uh, doesn't have it. Uh, so we're going to add this constructor here. And uh, so that's the minimum you can do. Right? Oops, sorry. That is the minimum we can do right there. The student class can. Uh, the student class simply calls the super constructor. And so this line here, this is actually this. All it's doing is is calling uh, the person string and name cons constructor. That's all it does. Uh, but you need to do that. And uh, similarly, the employee is going to need that guy too. Uh, we can go over there, hit command one, add constructor, and you know it almost it almost writes itself, right? And then let's go back. Now we can go back to main.java and uh, run this and it works. Show you the code. I'll minimize this. Let me show you the code. This is Bobby and Bobby, right? So we created the person. That was Bobby. So the cool thing is now I can create, uh, let's get rid of that person there. I'm going to create uh, some students. So I'm going to create a student. Harry is a new student. And Harry Potter. All right. So I got Harry. And uh, what's her name? Hermione. Um, so we're going to create our Miami Granger and uh, we need run to the first and finally run Weasley and I got to change the variable name to run. So we got three students. I can print Harry. Make it print Hermione. Oops, Hermione. And run. I can run that. 
and it worked. So I get those three printed out. But you see what's happening. I created the student, right? This, this, if you remember, this is the same as Harry dot two string. But we never did define a student dot two string. If you look at the student class, there is just set credits and get credits. That's it. So what is happening here is when this runs, we try to call Harry dot two string. We notice that Harry is a student, but the student class doesn't have any two string method. So Java goes up the hierarchy, right? Goes up, says, okay, student doesn't have a, a two string method. It goes to person. Oh, person does have a two string method. Uh, I'm just going to add that in there. So, person does have this two string method. Two string method right there. And uh, that's what ends up happening. Even though there isn't one at student, there is one at two string. Um, similarly, we could have done harry.get name. And you see it pops right up, even though the student class doesn't have a get name method. Java simply goes up to the person class and uses that. Right. Uh, let's do some employees. So similarly, we can have employee is going to be Hagrid. The new employee, um, Hagrid. Does Hagrid have a last name, first name? Uh, yes, apparently it's Rubius Hagrid. I'm looking that up. Uh, how do you spell that? Rubius. Oh, there's Hagrid. And uh, I can print out Hagrid. Um, oops, there's a problem here. I forgot my semicolon right there. So I can print out Hagrid. It's the same thing, right, to the employee. But, but uh, the one thing I can do with Harry, I can set, I can do Harry dot set credits. I can set his credits, I don't know, 100 credits. And uh, Hermione, I can set her credits to be, uh, well, probably like a thousand. Right. And those are there. Uh, if I try to do Hagrid.setCredits, Hagrid. Dot, I, I can't. So I can, because Hagrid doesn't have that method, Hagrid has the name and the salary. The name he inherits from person, as you can see there, it says person, and the salary is from employee. So I can set his salary, you know, his salary, uh, $10,000. And uh, that's too much for Hagrid. I don't think he gets paid so much. Um, so there you go. Um, that's the difference. So. The students, because the student class has credits, I can set credits. And because the employees have salaries, I can set salaries, but I can't do it on the other one. Uh, but I can set the names and get the names of both. And so I can get his name. Uh, and I can set his name later on. Okay, now one last thing. Say I, I do one, uh, when I print out a student, uh, I want him to print out the, the credits the student has taken. Uh, oops. So let's do that. Let's go to student.java, and what we're going to do is we're going to again override the two string method in the parent class. So public string two string, right? So I'm defining a two string method now in the student class, and that one is going to return. Uh, the name plus, uh, let's say credits, colon, plus the credits. Um, 
And uh, you see the problem, it's going to say, uh, it cannot see the name, right? So because the person declares the name and the name is private, that means that the student, which inherits from person, cannot see the name. So I cannot do that. Uh, if I try to do this.name, that's the same thing. It's not going to do anything. So to get the name, luckily, I, I did implement the get method. So I can do that. I can call get name that will return to me the name. And then I do this before. And the credits, you see, work just fine because the credits are declared here at student.java. Um, that's private. So I can go back now to main.java and run that. And it'll print out Hermione has a thousand and Ron Weasley has zero. And Harry Potter, well, I still have it. I'm just printing the name, so if I, if I do that, it'll print Harry two string, so Harry two has uh, 100 credits. And you see by default, Ron, I never set his credits, so the default is set to zero. Right. So that's a little quick intro.